From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Mexican drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman sentenced to life in prison. But will his incarceration even impact the Arizona drug trade? Plus, the Arizona Attorney General delivered a fierce message for Washington today. Leave our state alone. If people weren't forgetting their children, we wouldn't have 37 deaths per year in the car. And the science behind how routines can cause parents to leave kids in hot cars. Cronkite News starts now. It was sentencing day for drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Good evening, I'm Jesse Jopali. And I'm Matt Hogason. The man who twice escaped from Mexican prisons will now spend the rest of his life behind bars at a supermax facility in the United States. Marcela Bayero spoke with local defense attorneys about the Chapo's footprints in Arizona. Marcela? As El Chapo's sentencing wrapped up in New York, here in Arizona, legal experts mentioned that the drug trade that passes through Arizona is much bigger than just one man. This sketch shows the moment the infamous Chapo Guzman learned today he'll be spending the rest of his life in prison, plus an additional 30 years behind bars and the ordered repayment of over $12.5 billion in drug money. A lot of that coming from drugs smuggled through southern Arizona. There's a definite uh, connection to federal criminal law violations uh, alleged uh, to have been committed here in the state of Arizona under federal law. El Chapo, whose real name is Joaquin Guzman Loera, was convicted in February after a three-month trial. The charges included narcotics trafficking, using a firearm for drug crimes, and participating in a money laundering conspiracy. Authorities say El Chapo is responsible for countless deaths and the trafficking of incalculable tons of drugs as head of the feared Sinaloa cartel. Tucson-based criminal defense attorney Stephen G. Rawls represented the Chapo's brother in another drug case. Uh, whether or not Chapo received a fair trial will be determined or assessed uh, at the next level, which, which will be the court of appeal. Outside the Brooklyn courthouse today, attorneys from both sides spoke about the sentencing. Today brings a measure of justice for the American people. It brings a measure of justice for the country of Mexico, whose institutions were corrupted for decades by Mr. Guzman and the Sinaloa cartel. But you're never going to remove the stink from this verdict due to the failure to order a hearing on the misconduct of the jury in this case. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, as of 2013, the Tucson and Phoenix areas are major shipment and distribution points for the Sinaloa cartel in the United States. And even as El Chapo will now spend the rest of his life behind bars, legal experts say not much will change in the Arizona drug trade. But the reality is uh, uh, in that type of business, uh, once the main uh, person is gone, there's dozens of people waiting uh, uh, to take uh, his place. There's still no official word on exactly where El Chapo would be serving his sentence, but these legal experts did mention that most likely it will not be here in Arizona. At the digital desk, Marcelo Bayero, Cronkite News. Next Gen America, an organization that mobilizes young people to vote, organized a gathering outside of Senator Martha McSally's office today to deliver over 450 petition signatures in support of the Equality Act. The new congressional bill will add gender identity and sexual orientation to the classes protected by the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The updated bill will protect LGBTQ Americans from discrimination if it's passed. People stood outside with signs of support of the act before heading inside to deliver the petitions. And it's a no-brainer. Everyone should be represented and everyone should have an equal, equal rights in their workplace and they shouldn't be fired because of how they identify. The Equality Act is for everyone. So we need to make sure that we're standing together to make sure everyone has a fair and safe workplace. Democrat Mark Kelly has again outraised Republican Senator Martha McSally in the Arizona Senate race. New figures just released by the Federal Election Commission show McSally had about $4.4 million in the bank and no debt at the end of the quarter, while Kelly, a retired astronaut, had just under $6 million in the bank and no debt. So Kelly's fundraising more than doubled McSally's. The 2020 race to finish John McCain's last term is likely to be one of the closest Senate contests in the country. In the race for Tucson's next mayor, the Democratic candidates will debate each other later this week. The Pima County Democratic Party is hosting the debate tomorrow night at 6. 
Tucson City Councilwoman Regina Romero, former state senator Steve Farley, and local real estate developer Randy Dorman are all campaigning for the Democratic nomination. The primary election will take place August 27th, and the winner will go on to the general election in November. Arizona and Michigan don't have a lot in common, which is why officials from those states said today they shouldn't have to apply common solutions to different problems. Julian Padas has a story from our Washington Bureau. Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich joined other state officials here with a message for Washington, leave us alone. Burnovich was part of a Heritage Foundation seminar on federalism, or what they say is the importance of giving power back to the states. Our charge here is whether you agree with the policy or not, is to make sure that you don't have a central government or a group of judges um, arbitrarily pick and choose which rules and which laws will apply to this group or that group. Rules, panel members said, like the waters of the United States, or WOTUS. Critics of that EPA rule said it tried to apply the same standards to streams in Michigan as those in Arizona. Those decisions are best made at the local level, says Michigan State Senator Eric Nesbitt. I think for far too long, you look at D.C. for the solutions and solving problems instead of looking at individuals and on, in, in the states. And I think this really brings back the foundations of, of our American government and our constitutional republic. Utah House Representative Ken Ivory says the issues faced by governments today, state and federal, are too many and too complex not to work together on possible solutions. The biggest thing is, is really just getting back to clarifying that division of responsibilities again. I mean, there are, there are thousands of issues. There's no end to the issues. Ivory says there is still a role for the federal government, but the role should include a functioning partnership with the states. Time to build that division so that we do the things we can do in our separate states. The federal government does what it's supposed to do and does it well, but really clarifying those limits and divisions. But if the feds are not willing to work with local officials, Bernovich says states like Arizona are not afraid to go to court. Um, whether it's the, you know, WOTUS rules, whether it's the um, the ozone rules, um, whether it's the 111D rules. We have been involved in a series of lawsuits against the federal government, especially, um, uh, you know, some of the environmental agencies pushing back against these rules. Brnovich's was the first of several panels here today talking about states and how they can do things better than the feds. At the Heritage Foundation, Julian Paras, Cronkite News. There are three more top stories we're tracking today on Cronkite News. First, Tucson's Catholic leadership met with local government officials this afternoon to talk about where the city can temporarily house migrants seeking asylum. There's a tentative agreement to move migrant families to unused portions of a Pima County juvenile detention center, but critics are opposed to this. The Tucson Unified School District is also considering allowing migrants to stay in two former school buildings. The Phoenix Police Department has begun training officers on how to use a medication known as Narcan. It's a nasal spray that counters the effects of an opioid overdose. Each officer will carry two cartridges and a card with instructions on how to use the spray. And the Arizona Humane Society is working with police to figure out who put five puppies in a duffel bag and dumped them in a dumpster. They were found Monday near 7th Avenue and Baseline. Unfortunately, two of the puppies did not survive. But three were examined and all are recovering well but they'll be put up for adoption tomorrow at the Humane Society's Sunny Slope location. You can check their website or Facebook page for updates on adoption information. Would you believe that not all forms of shade are equal? Turns out that different types of shade, from trees to building awnings, provide different levels of relief. Cronkite News reporter Amanda Slee is with us now. Amanda, what type of research is going on? Researchers with Arizona State University are trying to figure out the best types of shade for people in a city that's getting increasingly hotter. It's called 50 grades of shade. What we're doing is we place one Mardi in the sun, that's our reference uh, measurement or reference Mardi, and then the other Mardi is sampling all kinds of shaded location. And Marty is their handy tool that gathers the data. Marty is a, a biometrological weather station. Uh, it's mobile, it's on a garden cart, and Marty can measure how you experience temperature. The research is early, but... We, we've noticed that there's some trees providing more shade or better shade than others. For example, the ficus. The ficus trees are really good at providing shade. 
but they are very expensive with respect to water. This analysis in Tempe on shade matters. A new scientific study that came out last week shows Phoenix in 30 years will have a climate like Baghdad. Phoenix is the perfect test bed or living laboratory to do these types of research studies um, to inform other places around the world that might become as harsh as Phoenix in the future. And for residents in Phoenix, shade is top of mind as summer heat continues. Depending on the space we are, if there's no shade, it's whatever shade there is, but we always look for trees. Trees and like canopies in the park and stuff like that. Mark Hartman, the chief sustainability officer for Phoenix, also finds trees a priority. You don't actually have to put a canopy over the whole city. It's just actually where the people walk. Like, what is the walk shed? Where are the routes people are taking? And just shade those on their trips to bus stops and, and schools and stores. The city is working with ASU to detect the routes that people walk most for these shaded areas. So our goal is to double the tree canopy by 2030. We're on a 13% and want to get to 25% tree canopy. As for ASU researchers... We're trying to inform public policy and, and hoping that the city of Tempe can use these numbers that we're uh, generating here with our measurements um, to, to create policy to make it more comfortable. These researchers expect their data to be published next year. In Phoenix, Amanda Slee, Cronkite News. just want my wife back. Coming up on Cronkite News, the search continues for a missing Arizona woman who vanished while hiking in California. Tonight, her husband shares what he thinks happened. And the queen bee shut down have a suit by falls last week, and now we see why. The Beyonce video featuring AZ is out. We'll give you a sneak peek after the break. Stay in the know, on the go. At Cronkite News, we work hard to report the facts and keep you updated, whether we're on set or on the scene. Taking it from the studio to the field. So I'm here in South Phoenix. In Phoenix, we're just a click away. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. children had come to the Mother Church of Country Music. It was almost like a badge of honor that you had to uh, bring your culture with you to the table. That's why Bob Wills and his guys brought us Western music. That's why Hank Williams brought the South with him from Honky Tonks. Johnny Cash brought the Black Lamb Dirt of Arkansas. Bill Monroe brought music out of Kentucky bluegrass music. Willie Nelson brought his poetry from Texas. Patsy Cline brought her heartache from Virginia. I mean, it, it was the most wonderful parade of sons and daughters of America that brought their hearts and their souls and their experiences, and it gave us a great era in country music. At the Grand An Arizona man is looking for his wife and asking for the public's help tonight. He says he only took his eyes off her for a moment when she went missing during a road trip to California. Bob and Barbara Thomas go on frequent trips together, taking their trailer out to explore. And Bob says this past weekend wasn't anything unusual. They went on a short hike in the Mojave Desert and were almost done when Bob stopped to take a picture. He says that was the last time he saw his wife. When he got back to their camp, he called 911 saying there was no trace of her. That's when crews showed up and started searching for the 69-year-old. feeling is that she was picked up because she had to cross a highway. She was wearing a bikini and she had a beer in her hand. I just want my wife back. And if somebody out there has her, which I feel somebody does, please uh, drop her off in a safe place where uh, she can contact us. Barbara Thomas was last seen wearing a black bikini, red baseball cap, and tan hiking boots with black socks. The U.S. Air Force says rescue personnel from an Arizona base parachuted into the Pacific Ocean last Wednesday. 
to board a Mexican fishing boat and provide medical aid to two critically injured fishermen. Base officials say the parachute men stayed on the boat for three days, carrying the fishermen to a clinic on an island just west of Puerto Vallarta. The military says the fishermen were injured when their boat's crane collapsed. After they arrived on the island, the fishermen were flown to Mazatlan, Mexico for further treatment. One of the most beautiful and difficult places to reach in Arizona made a debut in Beyonce's new music video for The Lion King. Havasupai Falls is such a popular landmark, it could take up to a year to reserve a spot to see the site. But for Queen Bee, all it took was a quick phone call. According to the Arizona Republic, the head of Arizona's film office got a call last week asking if Beyonce could shoot the music video there. And tribal officials allowed for the filming the very next day. After the video's release, many people complained on Havasupai Facebook groups saying Beyonce could have been the reason for keeping permit holders hiking from visiting to the falls. There's no word on how many visitors might have been impacted. Meanwhile, other state tribal members had every right to use their land as they wish. Up next, the science behind hot cars and why psychologists believe little ones are getting accidentally left behind and locked inside. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. Right now, people on Twitter are talking about the cellar fire, burning near Prescott. The lightning spark blaze began last week and has now grown to 7,000 acres. It's being worked on by four hotshot crews, two single-engine air tankers, and a helicopter crew. Some roads have been shut down in the area to protect responders. Whenever we hear about a baby forgotten inside a hot car, we ask ourselves, how can that happen? However, researchers say there's an element to consider, the element of routine. In some cases, with these high temperatures, it can be fatal. That's why psychologists are calling attention to this routine in hopes of preventing something like this from happening to you. Take a look. If people weren't forgetting their children, we wouldn't have 37 deaths per year in a car. Let's split the problem into two factors. The vehicles, not just how hot they get inside, but also how they get hot, as well as how quickly they do or do not cool off. And the human elements, our behavior, and how our psychology can play a role in the deaths of children who've been left inside hot cars. We're able to build up these routine behaviors, which allow us to be able to get through the world very easily. If we had to stop and think about every single action in our day, our brains wouldn't be able to handle the workload. Our mindless states are not an act of selfishness or neglect. Now let's explore the cars and the dynamics of how they get hot. And we had little sensors that would measure the surface temperature of the dashboard, the steering wheel, and the seat to see what was the temperature before we started the one hour and what was the temperature at the end. How do you calculate the risk to a child inside a hot car? This is how researchers at Arizona State University have been working on that problem carefully measuring how quickly a car's temperature rises to life-threatening levels for a young child. After that, we would take each car and we would turn on the air conditioning and run the air conditioning until we got the inside ambient air temperature down to about 85 degrees and then we would repeat the process. In the sun, where all the cars were in the sun, we saw that it on average took about an hour to reach that value. 
of 40 degrees Celsius core temperature. And in the shade, it took about an hour and 40 minutes to reach that value. Well, you turn the air conditioner on, you've cooled the air in the car, but you haven't cooled all the surfaces. You haven't actually drawn all the heat out of those surfaces. Those surfaces start to heat up again the next time you close the car up, some of that heat gets released back into the car. So in addition to the new sunlight that's coming into the car or whatever, you also have the heat coming off of those surfaces. What you see is a lot of internal organ damage. Long-term consequences of leaving a child in a car are seizures, um, so that's connected to brain damage um, from getting too hot. I always put our diaper bag in the back seat because that's where I have to go to get it, and my children are in the back seat. We live busy lives full of distractions. We have brains wired for mindless states that help us cope. Those factors can combine to cause us to forget a child. But the mechanisms of forgetting, the science of forgetting, the reasons why we forget are at play in all of these cases. Even though smartphones are a distraction, they can also be a solution. An app called The Back Seat, for instance, keeps track of how long your car has been stopped. It then sends notifications to your phone to prevent parents and caretakers from leaving a child behind inside a car. Taking a live look now at downtown Phoenix, it doesn't look like the heat is going away anytime soon. Tell me what's new. Let's see what Nakisha Johnson has to say about those triple digit temps out there. Nakisha? Unfortunately, we are not going to be escaping this heat anytime soon. We're going to be in triple digits all throughout the week. Let's take a look at our temperatures right now. Here in Phoenix, we're at 105. Other areas down south are in those triple digits as well. However, up north, you're going to see some high 80s as well as high 90s, which is unusual for up north. But we will see those temperatures decrease into the night. We're going to be in triple digits out uh, up until 10 p.m. tonight. So if you're getting home, getting off work, try to get home as soon as you can because it's going to still be warm out there. And then looking at tomorrow's highs here in Phoenix will be at 108. Other areas across the board will also be in triple digits. However, Cave Creek will be the lowest high for tomorrow with 103. Taking a look at the next couple days, again, 108 for tomorrow, going up a little bit Friday, down on Saturday, and clear skies Friday and Saturday. So it will be pretty warm those next couple days. However, we'll see some clouds coming in Sunday, all the way through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Let's hope that those clouds turn into rain, rain clouds so we can get the monsoon season going throughout this week. And then our lows will be those mid to high 80s the whole week. For your weather report, I'm Nikisha Johnson at Cronkite News. Coming up. Where are the Rattlers going to call home? An inside look at the decisions that need to be made to decide where, where they will play moving forward. That's next. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental, covering sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. Welcome to another edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Taylor Rocha. Let's talk sports. For the latest on local sports and beyond, we've got you covered. Let's do this thing. We challenge reporters to go beyond you know, a game story. We want stories with depth. It's just a really a crucial step from the college um, experience into the professional experience while you're still in school. At Cronkite Sports Now, watch the journalists of tomorrow cover sports today. On the next Arizona horizon, the impact of the state's minimum wage on food service workers and how the state's wildfire season has affected animal habitats. That's on the next Arizona horizon. The Arizona Coyotes have at times expressed their displeasure with playing at Gila River Arena. Now another Valley team may have to call it home. Cronkite News reporter Gabriel Moreno joins us to explain which team may be looking for a change in scenery. Stick Resort Arena, then known as America West Arena, hosted the Arizona Rattlers' first home game in 1992. But to begin the 2020 season, the Rattlers will call a new arena home. I'm thinking that Glendale is going to offer a big long-term contract 
to stay here and I'll continue to support them. Here being Gila River Arena in Glendale, where the Arizona Rattlers lost the Indoor Football League's United Bowl Championship Saturday. But Gila River Arena is not their regular home. That's Talking Stick Resort Arena, their home field since the downtown Phoenix venue opened as America West Arena in 1992. Talking Stick was not available Saturday because of an event conflict, and it will not be available to them for the next two years as the arena undergoes a $230 million renovation. The most likely option at this point, Gila River, something IFL Commissioner Michael Allshouse is excited about. The good news is that the Rattlers are going to still be here in the Phoenix, greater Phoenix area and, and going to be here for a long time. The relocation would move the Rattlers out to the home of the Arizona Coyotes, who have struggled with fan attendance. Rattlers president Chris Preston views the potential move to the West Valley as a growth opportunity and a chance to spread the Rattlers' success outside of Phoenix. We look at the pot as half full, not half, em half empty. So whichever move we make, and let's say that it's out here, even though the predominant piece of our fan base come from a different part of town, we look at that as a development opportunity as well. And uh, aside from telling us what we can't do out here, what can we do to develop that base of fans that may be sitting here waiting to come to games? The Rathers are also contemplating a move to Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum in downtown Phoenix. In the studio, Gabriel Moreno, Cronkite News. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.